My two previous videos showed how to estimate volatility first under the basic standard deviation approach, also called moving average. It had a weakness though, in that all of the returns are assigned the same weight. So we showed next level up in sophistication, the exponentially weighted moving average or EWMA approach to an estimate of volatility. And it had the feature of allowing us to assign greater weights to more recent returns in the historical window. This video takes a deep dive on the next level of sophistication, the GARCH 1-1, which generalizes the EWMA, also assigning exponentially declining weights, but in addition to that, allowing us to model a long-run variance toward which the series has a tendency to pull or gravitate toward. So this video will take more of a deeper dive, and then the next video, I'll take a more superficial approach. So just watch this if you want to really technically understand more about GARCH 1-1. So here is the most familiar version of the estimate for today's variance under the GARCH 1-1 model. And we're estimating today's variance as denoted by sigma squared. That's variance. Today is day n. And GARCH 1-1 says it is equal to the sum of three parts, omega plus alpha, which is the weight assigned to yesterday's squared return. Mu or u is the return. It's squared but it's day n minus one, plus beta, the weight assigned to yesterday's variance. So sigma squared, but day n minus one. So it's a recursive because we're estimating today's variance as a function of yesterday's variance. This model can be fit with an algorithm like MLE, but I'm, so we do need to specify the parameters and I'm just using some round numbers here. I have an alpha of 10%, that's right here. I'm using a beta of 8%, and usually most of the weight does go on the previous variance. And then I have a the last weight. There's three weights in the GARCH 1-1, alpha, beta, gamma. They sum to 100%. That's my, my, why my last gamma weight is not an input. It's just solved for. It's what's left over here. And we don't see it immediately on the superficial formula because this omega term is the product of that's this omega, is the product of the gamma weight multiplied by the long run variance. So this is John Hull's notation, but we could imagine different notation. So this omega itself is a value in the model specification, but it is a product of a gamma weight and a long run variance. So I have assumed a long run variance here of 1% squared. So I'm assuming a long run volatility of 1%. This is also called the unconditional variance. So this is the variance to which we expect the series to pull toward, I think of it as a gravitational pull toward the long run average. And so the omega then, as I mentioned, is the product of gamma the weight, in this case, 10% multiplied by the long run variance. And so my omega here, you can see, it's usually a very small number, is 0 0.000010. Okay, so this recursive version, however, is based on a logic which is similar to the exponentially weighted moving average approach to volatility, which I covered in the previous video. So recall, we started with the simplest idea of a volatility estimate, and that is the standard deviation. And then we showed the exponentially weighted moving average, which improved on it. And then the GARCH 1-1 generalizes by adding another theoretical improvement. What we have in common is the daily price closes a historical window of asset prices, which is really the key ingredient after volatility is a statistic based on a series of prices. I'm going back 60 days or three months times 20 days. And I have some random number here for prices. You may recall we divide a price by the previous day and that gives us the price or wealth relative. 
And that's, so that's a series of values that are being pretty close to one, a little above, a little below. We're, all, we're only using daily periods here. And then the natural log of those price relatives gives us the series of daily log returns, by definition, continuously compounded. And such that finally we squared the daily returns to get a series of squared returns and the average of those squared returns gives us an estimate for the variance under the simplest approach to volatility, which is to just take the standard deviation of the historical window. If I take the square root of that variance, I get the volatility estimate here under this approach, also called the moving average. And you can see my volatility is about 28.73 basis points. That's my daily volatility. But the elegance of this simplest approach is how easy it is to say it. Under this simple approach of moving average, the daily variance is just the average squared return. And then the exponentially weighted moving average overcame the key weakness of this by assigning greater weights to returns that are more recent and lower weights or lesser weights to returns that are more distant in the past. Okay, so the GARCH11 does that as well. The GARCH11 has this in common with the exponentially weighted moving average approach in that it also assigns exponentially weighting, exponentially declining weights to the squared returns. So here under my assumptions, the weights turn out to be, the weight on any given day is alpha times beta raised to the i minus one. That means on the previous day's weight, which is day one and minus one, the weight is alpha times beta to the one minus one or beta to the zero or one. So the most recent weight is just alpha or 10%. If I go back to two days prior when my i is 2, then its weight will be alpha multiplied by beta to the first power or beta. So the 8% is alpha of 10% multiplied by beta of 80% or 8% and so on. And so similar pattern to the exponentially weighted moving average, what we have here is a constant ratio of consecutive weights. Notice I start with alpha of 10% is the weight assigned to my most recent squared return. And then 80% of that beta percent of that is 8%. 80% of eight is 6.4. 80% of 6.4 is 5.12. My weights are in constant proportion and that proportion is beta. So my beta is analogous to the lambda in exponentially weighted moving average. So I have here in theory an infinite series. My series only goes back to 60, but that gets me pretty close to zero values here, such that if I accumulate the cumulative weight in an almost infinite series, my series is truncated, my cumulative weight here is 50%. When I did this in the exponentially weighted moving average, I got 100%. Well, that's because so far we've just talked about what they have in common, the, the EWMA and the GARCH11. What they have in common is this feature of exponentially declining weights assigned to the squared returns, which hopefully makes intuitive sense. Let's give more credit to more recent volatility or movement. That's what they have in common. Now what they have in difference is the fact that the GARCH11 includes this term to give weight, in this case, a 10% weight to a long run, or long run or unconditional variance. So the series is getting pulled toward the variance. In my case, again, that variance is 1% squared. And so I'll put this math in a link or in a comment, but cumulatively in the infinite series, this ends up being the other 50% actually into these assumptions. 
And so my weights do equal 100%, but now I have in the infinite series really two things contributing to the pattern. I have these declining weights, but I also have this unconditional variance that's contributing at every point in time and cumulatively 50%. So that in a pattern similar to the exponentially weighted moving average, I can now take the product of the squared daily return and the weights. So you can see here, all we're doing here is weighting each squared return and, and summing it. At this point in the exponentially weighted moving average, we could have stopped because that's all we have. But in the Garch 1-1, we need to add the contribution for the long run um, or unconditional variance. And the formula for this happens to be my omega divided by 1 minus beta due to its nature as a geometric series. So I'm giving that credit for the, or that contribution for the unconditional average. And I'm, then I'm getting my current estimate for variance as given by the Garch 1-1 model for volatility. I take the square root of it and I get the sigma n or today's estimate for volatility. And you can see it's 90.6 basis points. It's three times higher. And there's two reasons for that. One, just in my random numbers, my I have more volatility in the re, in the more in the recent days than I do in distant days, and they're getting greater weight. But also, importantly, I have that long run variance of one percent squared or long run volatility of one percent, and my my variance estimate is getting pulled toward it. If this, if I lower this, then this comes down. But right now it starts below it and it's getting pulled toward the 1%. So that's the rationale or logic of the Garch 1-1. And then as with the EWMA approach, this tedious math, because it's an infinite series, reduces to the elegant version here. And just to show that that's the same, off the page, what I've done is estimate the volatility on day n minus one, and it happens to be about 88 basis points. So that's my sigma sub n minus one here. And now if I have yesterday's volatility or variance estimate, then I don't need to go back on the infinite series. I can just implement the familiar Garch 1-1 model. And so I'll do that here. I'll just recreate that, right? Because we're going to say it's going to be the omega plus my alpha weight of 10% applied to my most recent squared return plus my beta weight multiplied by the most recent variance. And I need to square that because as an input, it's a it's a, only a sigma. And you can see that this formula implements this recursive version. I don't need to go back into the infinite series because that information is contained in yesterday's variance, but I get the same result. Take the square root of that. I get this 90.6 basis points as my estimate for today's volatility under the Garch 1-1. The 1 and 1 actually stands for this 1 and this 1, lag 1 return squared, lag 1 variance. And just to recap, my I have one thing in common with the exponential weighted moving average and one difference. The thing in common is that the weights are declining exponentially and they are captured here. Both Garch and, and e EWMA do that, but the Garch 1-1 difference is it adds this term and a contribution of a weight applied to the long run variance. And so the series gets pulled to this, and that's the difference from the exponentially weighted moving average. So I hope that's helpful. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and we'll notify you with future updates.